In this video, I play with Jackie Chulia, an up-and-coming lady pro from Thailand. She actually won her first tournament ever as a pro at the Angkor Golf Resort in Siem Reap. The real truth is that this is the most relatable stuff for us to watch. Not only do these ladies have absolutely priceless, eye-wateringly smooth tempo, they also remain completely ego-free and sane on the golf course. They accept their distances exactly as they are and play the game to their best abilities. Jackie embodies the way of the player like an absolute boss. I hope to bring more and more lady pros to you to inspire more and more players to understand that lower scores and level-headed golf is possible. You don't need to keep deluding yourself into thinking you are DJ or John Ram. You don't need to keep smashing your 9-iron when you should be hitting a 7-iron. Take note of a few things in this video while watching her and use them too. 1. Her tempo is smooth. She isn't murdering the golf ball. A lot of people can't understand how someone's swing looks slow, but the ball goes so long. That's the lack of tension and delusion that allows for natural speed. 2. Her distances with her clubs are pretty similar to club golfers' distances, and she plays from the same tees as you. 3. There is no temper and tension. Get the ball in the hole, then move to the next. 4. She enjoys the game. Golf is a pro's version of a 9 to 5 job, but Jackie loves it and has fun out there. This is taking nothing away from the fact that she is a pro and this is her job. Of course, you can't play like this without hours of work. But with a thinking man's brain, we can all take something out of this and apply it to our next round. We played the Thai Country Club, one of the more prestigious clubs in the country. It's hosted Asian tour events and once Tiger Woods won an event here. It's near Bangkok and is always in superb condition with lovely Paspal and Greens. Good shot. She's that roll, eh? Hi, I'm Jackie Shulia and I'm a professional golfer. I play on China LPGA and Taiwan LPGA. I graduated from Columbia University in New York. In 2016, I won the Danish Hall Trophy Award winner. So, so I turned pro in October 2017. Next year, uh, I'll be playing on China and Taiwan again, but I'm thinking about going to um, some other Q schools, like maybe LPGA and Perhaps Korea. She hits a lovely tee shot, but got unlucky as it took a strange bounce and settled in this awkward lie. Usually, we amateurs just copy paste. We see a distance, we use one club for that distance without thinking. That's where low handicap and pros get it right. They know golf is a four dimensional game. You need to consider lie, stance, green entrance, green speed, mounds, slopes, wind, grass type, ball type spin properties of different shots. JC elects to hit a softer shot for control because it won't hold the green with a full shot. The lie means it will be a flyer, so she hits a longer club which will roll out. It's a punchy okay, style shot. So what shape do you hit the ball normally? Um, my natural swing is fade. Fade? Yeah, it's, it's a fade, but I've been working on it because I don't like the fade. Why? Because it's short. Oh, okay, I got you. <laughs> So, um, with this hole, mm -hmm. or with any hole, where do you normally tee the ball up on the tee? Is there any strategy? Well, it depends on the layout of the hole. So for this one? So for this one, um, so we want to go on the left side, right? Because mm -hmm. the right side, obviously, there's that big um, fairway bunker. So, I would, with the draw that I want to hit, I would want to tee up a little bit more to the right side. Okay, so you're going to hit a draw off the bunker? Yeah, of that. Okay. You see that edge? Yeah. Sticks out on the left side. Okay, so for me, like, this is where this is my problem. Mm -hmm. I'll look at the hole and go, okay, it's it's going to the right, so I should hit a fade. That's wrong, right? No, definitely, you do not want to hit a fade on this hole. Yeah. It, especially if you want to go over there. Caddy. Because the water is on the right. Yeah, you're right. And then you lose distance and go in the water. Yeah, or or if if it doesn't go in the water, it's short and it's gonna end up in the bunker. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> you've changed my mind. <laughs> Here, Jackie pointed out something to me that I picked up on video games. I used to play Tiger Woods Golf on the PlayStation. Dog leg right, smash a fade. Dog leg left, hit a huge draw. But Jackie pointed out, there's a bunker. 
there's water. So why hit a fade toward that stuff? Um, hmm. On a par 5, Jackie shares the same philosophy as the way of the player. Hit the comfortable shot that goes the furthest, then get there and decide on the next one. If you can go for it, do it. If you're on the edge of your ability, lay up and try for an easy pitch. So what's the play? Uh, I'm going left side of the green, not really going for it. Okay. What kind of shot shape? She knows she has the distance, but it would mean taking on the water, and it's right at the edge of her limit, so she aims well left and wants to leave a pitch shot that opens up the green. How many of us would rather hit a shot at the green, swing hard, and then plop it in the drink? We take a seven, hate the course, and fume the rest of the way round. In this situation, we make no more than a five, and we remain as cool as the other side of the pillow. What do you think Jackie's thinking on the fifth tee? Is she thinking, I've only hit one green in regulation? Or, damn, I didn't make birdie on the par five. Life sucks. I bet she didn't think anything other than, okay, this is the fifth hole. Drive and then let's approach and try and make a putt. Please note, on this par 3, I hit a 9 iron while Jackie hit a 7 iron. This is my big argument when people leave comments on the channel. They mention I hit the ball further than most, but I always say it makes no difference. Jackie hit it closer than I did with a 7 iron. Yes, she is a pro, but it doesn't change the fact it's a two club difference and a better result. Every single hole is like this. You can be better by 10 shots if you give up the victim mentality and delusion of grandeur. No, man, not alive. So, how much time do you spend practicing a week? Um, around four to five days. Okay, so. and then how, how do you structure the practice? Yeah, so I go out in the morning around eight or nine, practice um, until about obviously like 12 and we get lunch and then around two to three o'clock I go to work out in the gym. And then it's done for the day? Yeah. And uh, what about like when you come to practice, what are you doing? Um, well, I need to be clear about what I want to achieve today. Mm -hmm. Like. Uh, for example, if I'm working on putting, 
So I usually start with, uh, you know, like just putting on a ruler or using like alignment sticks just to keep the ball um, rolling straight first and then, okay. then I do lag putting. So having, having a bit of structure helps, definitely. So like, do you mean like you can, like week by week you change it or do you generally have like Monday is going to be chipping, Tuesday is going to be this oh, no, or it, afternoon not, or it's morning not session? It's structured. It, oh. it also depends on... Um, my game at the time so after I play like 18 holes I would look at you know like where what are the things that I can improve on okay. like sometimes it's uh, you know distance control with pitching so I work on that um, or sometimes it's uh, some like alignment uh, with the, the full swing and the drives and things like that yeah Thank so you. it really depends Something very interesting was when I asked Jackie what she thinks about when things aren't going her way. She said the last thing you think of is mechanics on the golf course. For her, it's majority of the time swing tempo. Getting the tempo right and not rushing, not swing too hard and not too fast at the ball. These vague feelings and concepts can help our game on the course and get us in the groove again. Pointing out specific swing mechanics and then trying to magically fix them mid-round, well that's the death of our game, players. So far, you can see that Jackie simplifies the game. She wants to find the fairway, avoiding hazards. If she misses the fairway, she needs to consider the options and make the best choice to get the ball near the green. Regardless of where she is, she wants to be in a position to get it on the green for a putt and if she doesn't hold the surface, she wants to be in a place to get up and down for par. Playing with Jackie was enlightening. I could play golf with her once a week and I would transform my whole mindset and yeah, swing concept totally. Holding. I know it. I could feel the zen yeah. flowing off of her and that made me swing calmer. There was not an ounce of tension in her play. It's truly zen-like. The players, turn off the PGA Tour and highlights packages from the tour on YouTube. Just for a month, avoid the men's tour and watch this video once a week or Bo's video. Add in some ladies pro golf and just for that month, see how your scores change. I'll bet you become more zen, much smoother and more relaxed on the golf course. You'll be trying to keep up with you, not DJ, not Ram, not Bubba. Give it a go, tell me how it goes. In the next video with Jackie, we played a best ball scramble for the second nine at Thai Country Club. Draw. Dead straight. <laughs> what a drive, man.